Today, I'm going to show you how to build a really good machine to use as an alarm system, to use with cameras for human detection, and home automations, of course. What you're looking at is a MacBook Pro 2010 that I got for free. Seeing how all the Raspberry Pi 4 are being sold out everywhere or being sold for a ridiculous markup, I thought there must be a better way. And free is always good. When you open a MacBook Pro, this is what you'll see. You'll see a hard drive. I replaced that with SSD. Here's the RAM. I tried upgrading the RAM, but it didn't like my RAM for whatever reason, so I kept it at 8 gigabytes. By the way, this is from 2010, and the MacBook Pro uses a Core 2 Duo. That was very shocking. I removed all of the guts, everything, because I don't need the case, I don't need the screen, I don't need the monitor, I, I don't need the keyboard, everything. Just remove it all. I don't even need the speakers. This is all I needed. The RAM, the SSD for the OS, the cooling mechanism for the chip, and that's it. Let's take a closer look because there's no power on off button for the MacBook Pro. You're going to need to short these two contacts. One, two. Let me zoom in further for you. So I ended up using a screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver to touch these two contacts to turn this on. This is what it looks like in the final product with the 3D printed case. It's pretty small. You can hold it in your palm of your hand. Two palms of your hand, actually. The problem with this setup is that the fan is extremely loud. It's running from a scale of 1 to 10. It's running 11, okay? That's how crazy loud the fan was. The whole house, I could hear the fan spinning. Next, I use a different uh, laptop that I also got for free from the Facebook marketplace. But again, it didn't have the slot that I need for the Google Coral chip. Seeing how the Coral USB stick is all sold out, I had to use the Google M2 A&E slot. And the other laptop, the next laptop I was using, Toshiba laptop, did not have this slot for me to use the Coral chip. So what is the next best thing? This is the next best thing. The HP ThinClient T530. In the back, you have plenty of USB ports, four of them total, Ethernet jack, power, we're looking at AAA batteries here, so you can see how small this whole thing is. I got it from eBay for about 50 bucks shipped with the power cable included, so it's ready to go. In order to open this, all you have to do is grab this and pull it back. Upon pulling it back, you'll release this whole back cover. Press the screen button and lift this lid straight up. To give you an idea of how small this thing is, it's about 8 inches across. It's square, so it's 8 by 8. Here's a gaming controller that you can see for scale. It's pretty small. There's no fan whatsoever, so it's super quiet. It's deadly quiet. It came with RAM 4 gigabytes. You can upgrade it to whatever you want. I kept it at 4 gigabyte because I didn't need that much more. Let's take a closer look. It has 32 gigabytes M2 SSD. This is the Wi-Fi module that we don't need. So go ahead and loosen the screw and pop this M2 module out. We don't need it. We're going to replace it with the Coral chip. This is what it looks like when you loosen the Wi-Fi module. Go ahead and pop this connections off. There's two of them for the uh, antenna. Just go ahead and just pop them off and it'll go away. Then I use the wires and tuck it behind these uh, crevices just in case I need Wi-Fi in the future, which I highly doubt. This is the Coral chip. Seeing how the USB version is all sold out, I had to get the A and E version. Once the Wi-Fi module was removed, I was able to just slip the Coral module directly into the M2 slot and then tighten the screw. Next, remove this SSD, loosen the screw and pop the M2 SSD out. Because I don't have any adapter, I'm just going to pop the M2 SSD directly into my motherboard. My regular Windows 10 motherboard has this slot for the uh, 32 gigabyte to sit into. We're going to flash it with the Has OS so that way the HP Thin Client will boot into Has OS. So go ahead and use Belena Etcher, open it up. You're going to flash from the URL. So click on that, paste the URL that you copy, click OK. In the target, go ahead and choose the SSD M2 module that you insert from the uh, Thin Client. Go ahead and choose its target and show hidden. Make sure you choose the 32 SSD.
finally hit flash for it to write the image onto this 32 gigabyte module. Yes, I'm sure. As you can see, it takes about five minutes. So go ahead and grab yourself a cup of coffee or ice cream. Once it's done flashing, it will also validate. So go ahead, you can skip this if you want. And there you go. Make sure that flash is completed. Now pop the M2 module out of your computer and back into the thin client. Once you get your Google Coral back into the M2 slot and the SSD also into the M2 slot, do everything in reverse to close the lid and then apply the power core into the thin client. As soon as it gets power, it will boot up instantly. You don't even have to press the power button. Once the thin client powers up, keep pressing delete to get into this startup menu. When you see this, hit F10 or you can use the uh, arrow keys and then enter. Go to security and go down to system security. Virtualization technology, enable. Go down to secure boot configuration. Are you sure you want to continue? F10 to continue. Legacy support, enable. Secure boot, disable. I don't know if these matters, but make sure yours is the same as mine. Go into storage and then go down to boot order. Make sure that it boots up from the SSD first. Save all your settings and then restart the computer. If all is good, you'll start seeing a bunch of these and a whole lot more. Once it fully boots up, you really don't need a monitor to see anything. You can just use the web GUI to control everything, to make all the changes. Previously, I was using the MacBook Pro. It's time to migrate everything from the MacBook Pro to the thin client. On my MacBook Pro, I click on Supervisor, Backups, Create Backup. It's going to be a full backup. Type in the full backup name of whatever you want and then click Create. Here, you can see I already created a backup. I'm just going to click on it. Click on the three dots and click on Download Backup. It's going to download to my Windows 10 machine. Go into System, shut down Host. When your thin client boots up for the first time, it will ask you to create a username and password. Go ahead and create it. I already created mine, so I'm just going to hit Login. We're going to restore the MacBook Pro. So just click on Supervisor, Backups. Click on the three dots at the top, Upload Backup. Go ahead and find the backup file that you downloaded earlier and then click on open. Once it uploads, you'll see a file right here. Click on it and then hit restore. It will restore everything from the MacBook Pro to this new thin client. And you can mix and match with anything. For instance, I was using a laptop before and then I migrate into a Raspberry Pi or I was using a Raspberry Pi and then I migrated into the laptop. Whoever made this is a genius because migration from one machine to another machine is pretty smooth. When I restore from the MacBook Pro, the Z-Wave and the Zigbee was up and run running, no issues at all. Pretty wild. As for setting up the alarm system, the first thing you'll need are some doors and window sensors. I use these Xfinity door sensors and they are the smallest thing I've ever seen. Here is a stack of quarters so you can see how thick it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven quarters thick. Here it is comparing to uh, quarters, nickels, dimes, and pennies. As you can see, it's pretty small. The maximum that you can separate them is about half an inch before the, uh, the read switch activates from on and off or off to on, half an inch away. For siren, I use this Honeywell. This is a 12 volt DC adapter. The two wires from your DC goes into these two contacts. Each of these contacts correspond to a different noise. So play around with the two wires for the noise that you actually want. The black will always go into the ground. The red can go into whichever contact you want. The 12 volt DC adapter are then plugged into this Sonoff Zigbee Smart Relay. So if something goes wrong, Home Assistant will flip this Smart Relay to on and then the siren will go off. It's pretty loud. In addition to the doors and window sensor, you'll definitely need motion detection. I'll have the link for you in the uh, description section for you. This is the cheapest motion detection sensor that I've ever found. 
it's around twenty dollars. Very reasonable and works just as advertised. You can see that I use Alarmo as the alarm panel for the whole house. Here are all of the sensors that I have installed. In addition to the uh, door sensors and motion sensor, I also added the glass brick sensor because there's a bunch of windows in the house. Here's the uh, carbon and fire detector. Various motion detections in the house. I'm not going to go over Alarmo in this video. But I made a video in the past about it, so please check that video if you want a more detailed guide on how to set up alarm mode. For human detection, I'm using Frigate. Again, I made a video in the past about it, so it's not going to be covered in here. In your Frigate YAML file, this is what it should be. Detectors, Coral, Type, HTPU, Device, PCI. Before, I was using the MacBook Pro CPU and the Core Duo 2 can barely keep up with two cameras. With Coral, you can see that there's virtually no slowdown whatsoever. So with Coral helping Frigate, the CPU usage is only 47%. Pretty good, right? And RAM is at uh, 12%. Not bad at all. I've been using this system with a thin client for about a week now and no issues at all. Hopefully you can find a thin client for cheap and the Google Coral so that way you can play around with frigates and human presence detection. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. I really appreciate you guys subscribing to my channel and thanks for watching.